we are intend to use newspaper for reading the news rather than it is going the time is spent for something else so what is your say about this you as a reader you find it uh, frustrating that in the newspaper also there are more advertising and entertainment than news but on the other hand a uh, newspaper in india is the cheapest newspaper there's nowhere in the world that you get such a newspaper in 2 rupees or 3 rupees in our neighboring country pakistan a newspaper which is 12 pages very bad paper quality is being sold at 20 rupees 30 rupees so because of the historical fact that the news print media started because of the freedom movement at that time the thing was being circulated free of cost for that purpose that legacy has continued social media has even like uh, they have earned the trust and credibility within a short period of time as compared to the conventional media it is correct 20 saal 25 saal pehle shayad 25 saal ki baat ho gayi one of the editor of a large print media said that my job is the second most important job in the country after the prime minister suna aapne kabhi he said that openly that was the mindset of the editors today they can't say that today they are worried ke what will people say on on social media about me So these days, a uh, lot of new channels run. I think 24/7, not just Z but any other channel. So in that context, I think a uh, lot of news are being repeated over and over again. So in that term, in that context, how much credibility does a news lose because they have to fill in some news at some time? So do the news channels struggle, and is that also a cause of media uh, losing its credibility? Is that a problem at all? Yeah, there is a problem. Lot of repetition of the same news. do cause the questioning on the credibility they don't lose it but they question they but aaj ke din viewer ke samne ek choice hai uske sath hath mein remote control hai jahan repeat aati dekhta hai wo nikal jata hai wahan se i mean it has, it is also slowly becoming democratic in a, in that sense that nobody can force you to watch my news now we talked about credible media we talked about responsible media but there's another angle like you said and that's a sensitive media somewhere i think uh, in this massification of the industry and the business of media we seem to have lost that human touch one of course is in finding out the good stories but even when the not so good stories are being covered media should be sensitive enough we saw a good example in uh, nepal post the earthquake where we saw a little insensitive media you are right we have many many examples where media has behaved very insensitively i mean as dr natarajan said that 2611 happening at the then bombay taj hotel was one such case there are hundreds and hundreds of cases so we will discuss this insensitivity of the media yes Uh, so in print media if you take re- now actually what is happening is to reach the main page it takes 3 pages to reach because a lot of advertisements are coming up yeah. and adding to that if you open the paper there are five pamphlets falling down uh, about adverse advertisements and if you see in some leading newspapers the entertainment section of the page is much thicker than the normal main page yeah. so what people are doing is when people want to spend 15 20 minutes every day to read a newspaper most of the time is getting used by this see and, these are both ways you can answer this questions two ways both ways one for one against you as a reader you find it uh, frustrating that in the newspaper also there are more advertising and entertainment than news but on the other hand a newspaper in india is the cheapest newspaper there's nowhere in the world that you get such a newspaper in 2 rupees or 3 rupees in our neighboring country pakistan a newspaper which is 12 pages very bad paper quality is being sold at 20 rupees 30 rupees you go to london you want to pick up any tabloid or any newspaper 
it costs you one pound, even more, sometime one and a half pound. So because of the historical fact that the news print media started because of the freedom movement, at that time the thing was being circulated free of cost for that purpose, that legacy has continued. In print media particularly, uh, the power is still in few hands in this country, despite there being 10, 12,000 newspapers. And they certainly do not want a, a competition to come up, so they have naturally kept the cover price of the newspaper very, very low, so that they don't, there, there should not be competition to them, because no newspaper, new one, have succeeded in last 30 years. Can you imagine? At national level, no newspaper in 30 years have made success. Indian media is considered as the fourth pillar of democracy. So don't you think this pillar has been shaken with the rise of social media, like Facebook and more specifically Twitter? This uh, social media has even like, uh, they have earned the trust and credibility within a short period of time as compared to the conventional media. It is correct. 25 years ago, maybe 25 years ago, one of the editor of a large print media said that my job is the second most important job in the country after the prime minister. Suna aapne kabhi isko. He said that openly. That was the mindset of the editors. Today they can't say that. Today they are <laughs> worried ke what will people say on, on social media about me. So uh, I would say the social media is helping the news media to stay honest. And more and more you will see that happening. Sir, right now every media channel has an anchor who, is, uh, who has a very vibrant personality and is visibly outspoken about polarizing issues. So do you think that during these shows, the actual news takes a backseat? when uh, five or four, four or five people are debating on yeah, the Yeah, I had written in one of the things. People have rejected that. People don't want that uh, fighting match on the screen anymore. Screaming, shouting, they don't like it. One of our <laughs> editor was also going in the same direction. I said, well, this is what people are saying. Let's not do it. Sir, so I, I would like to ask, like the essence of media is passion to deliver unbiased news. So how do you qualify the top line management? Uh, the people who can deliver you numbers or like you really search for real passion? See, my personal belief is that uh, if you are honest uh, and uh, you listen to the people what they want, then the numbers will also follow. It's a matter of time. At least we are making an honest effort in our news media to try and do that. But it is difficult to change the mindset uh, because the editors, the journalists, they also come from the set mindset. Today what is happening is people are really anxious what gives them the top line, what gives them the rating, what gives them more readership. And things are driven by that. I think if we, if we change it to what people want and we respond, honestly, I think we will meet uh, both objectives. Uh, I strongly feel that like uh, we have moved from information scarcity to information overload. Yes. So as an end user, even though people resort to selective reading, there is way too much of content to assimilate. So you as an end user, what is your take on that? Well, nowadays the technology enables you to pick up, select what you want to, uh, information you want to take. So. That is, that is one way to do it. I mean, you, there are websites, there are apps which are available that you punch the uh, subjects which you are interested in and you will get news only on those subjects. And soon you will see, in the, even in mass media, what is going to happen is that uh, the connected TV at your home and you don't have to watch all the news, uh, whatever is being shown at whatever time. There will not be any prime time. 
So you watch whichever news you want to watch at whatever time you want to watch. That's coming soon. So they will, there may be over information which is available. And information, we, have, we believe that whatever is written on Google is, is the truth. It is not. I mean, my granddaughter was one day, she came to me and she said that I have to write an essay on Lokmanya Tilak. Bal Gangadhar Tilak or Lokmanya Tilak, whatever name you call it. So I gave her some information, whatever I knew. I said, Beta, Baki mein information aapko ko ek do phone karke leke de ta But then after half an hour, she comes. She said, Nene, Dada, I have seen it. Google pe dekh liya. Kya dekha? He was a militant Hindu leader. Can you believe that Lokmanya Tilak was a militant? I don't think so. So, I mean, this is where many of our reporters and journalists go wrong. Manat nahi karte hain. Google pe dekh liya, kuch pad liya, khabar laga diya wa. That's where, that is also one source that we lose, lose our credibility. Though we are discussing about uh, news media losing its uh, uh, credibility, I would like to uh, put forward a different uh, viewpoint of this. If we see that uh, nowadays a news channel like to uh, put forward the news in a very descriptive manner, like they would like to get more information about every single topic rather than the days before. And they would like to uh, give the news much at a very... Uh, earlier time than other competitors. So they would like to put forward the news first on their channel. So uh, what is the benefit that people are getting is that they're getting a better information about every topic and they're getting the news much faster than uh, the earlier days. Yeah, both things are happening, but many times in, in anxiety to give the news ad in advance from others, sometimes we may, they make mistake also. But uh, certainly that is the positive of our news media in India, that today, I mean, there is a fear in the minds of the legislature, the executives, even to some extent in the courts, that when something comes on the uh, media, whether it is on social media, mass media, print, electronics, they are careful. They don't uh, take things for granted as they used to. I remember 1970s, if somebody remembers, there was a famous Nagarwala murder case in Delhi. Uh, this gentleman was murdered in Delhi in daylight robbery. One day only some news came in the newspaper, next day onwards blacked out. Nobody talked about it, why it was he was murdered and who murdered him. You see case as an example, emergency. They, the government could censor the newspapers at that time uh, conveniently. It's a different thing that uh, they lost the election because of the censoring of the news. Uh, they, they didn't know what's really happening on the ground <laughs> that resulted into loss of election, but they could censor. Can they, any government censor today, even if they apply emergency rules? I don't think so. There's so much happening, so many social media, print media, TV stations, so many of them, that nobody can censor today. It's impossible. But I find in China, media is completely censored. You can't access Facebook, you can't but that access... But that is different, sir. That country is not a democratic country. Well, that's fine. But even here we can do that. If the government wants to do it, they can do it. No, sir. In a democracy, you cannot do it. People will... I mean, this is a whole new subject altogether. Okay. Uh, I will tend to disagree, sir. Right. Because it's a whole new subject. I mean, I would say that we have got political freedom in this country, but we have not got social and economic freedom even today after 70 years of our existence. And political freedom or mean democracy or whatever you call it, uh, even today it is impossible. They tried to. UPA 2, 
I mean, the, then uh, we heard three, four days it was the news in the media when they said that we are, go we are going to stop the social media, we are going to censor, we did this. But there was so much hue and cry that they had to back off second, third day. Today it's not possible. I mean, we are seeing these days so many actions being taken in a hurry by the executives or political legislative people and you see all of a sudden four days, five days, they withdraw that. I mean, recent uh, case of uh, how do you file your income tax return? Their income tax return form was almost 20 pages. They wanted you to fill up every single foreign trip of yours when you take up. Where did you go? How much money did you spend? All those stuff. And uh, the social media went berserk and they had to withdraw that form. So it's not easy, sir, today. Well, I'm, China is continuing and they still have, they all, all media is government controlled. And from day one, they put stop on internet. The, everything is censored. We run our, we are the only Asian TV channel which is permitted or allowed. We have got license in China. But uh, our entire programming goes through a check before it is put, though it is entertainment programming. And it is uh, run about six minutes late, five, six minutes late. Their people are sitting in our retransmission center in China. They go through every single frame by frame. Sir, as you said, uh, government cannot censor currently the media because of the power of the media. But there have been unfortunate cases like uh, suspicious deaths of journalists or even an IT technician or IT professional in Pune. Is, can we say that because of such events, out of fear, media is giving in its credibility and bending down to big guns? No, no. One stray case doesn't uh, deter the people. I wanted to ask you being the chairman of the SL group, you're coming and speaking in the front of public for about the media credibility. It takes a courage. But what, what I wanted to ask is what after this discussion? We just somebody talked about what about the follow-up after the discussion. What more can be done to gain the credibility back? It's just about the discussing it or what, what more can be done from the media side to gain the credibility back to it? I believe that I am the change. I have to first change myself. I have to change. If I control a media, news media, I should change first. And I believe that if we change it towards this direction, what we have found out from people, ourselves, first time a media company's owner and the editors have gone out to talk to people one-to-one -one themselves. And we know where we are heading, what people want from us. Let's see one or two change people. What, what did the people do? जहां दुनिया में डिफोरेस्ट्रेशन के आंकड़े कई इन्वायरमेंटलिस्ट्स को चिंता में डाल रहे हैं वहीं बेंगलुरु के शुभेंदु शर्मा अपने तरीके से इस मुद्दे से जूझ रहे हैं नैनीताल में पैदा हुए शुभेंदु हमेशा से ही खुद को प्रकृति के करीब महसूस करते थे इंडस्ट्रियल इंजीनियरिंग के क्षेत्र में पढ़ाई करके एक बड़ी ऑटोमोबाइल कंपनी में काम तो शुरू कर लिया लेकिन इनका पैशन तब पूरा हुआ जब एक जैपनीज साइंटिस्ट से मुलाकात हुई I have done my industrial and production engineering and I have worked for Toyota for uh, two and a half years. Uh, where I happened to meet uh, this scientist, his name is Akira Miyawaki. Uh, I was very moved by the work which he do and uh, I could see that in just a small period of one and a half years we made a forest of 30,000 trees in uh, the Toyota factory premises. Uh, I volunteered with him, learned the methodology and uh, eventually it lead me to leave my job at Toyota and uh, start a forest. नौकरी छोड़ देश में वृक्षारोपण यानी कि फॉरेस्ट्रेशन के क्षेत्र में काम करने का फैसला तो शुभेंद्र ले चुके थे लेकिन इस मुकाम तक पहुंचने में भी रोड़े कम नहीं थे लाइक एनी अदर मिडिल क्लास फैमिली माय फैमिली वाज अ लिटिल रिलक्टेंट इन अलाउंग मी टू गो फ्री एंड स्टार्ट द कंपनी बट द फर्स्ट थिंग व्हिच आई डिड वाज आई मेड अ फॉरेस्ट इन बैकयार्ड ऑफ माय ओन हाउस एंड माय फैमिली माय नेबर्स माय माय रिलेटिव्स एवरीवन माय फ्रेंड्स they participated in the planting of this forest. And eventually when they saw it grow, I think uh, that gave them a lot of confidence that what I am doing is of really high importance and it's really beautiful. 
वो कहते हैं ना जहाँ अच्छा वहाँ राह तो शुभेंदु ने भी एक राह ढूंढ ही ली 2011 में इन्हें फॉरेस्ट की शुरुआत की और आज शुभेंदु और उनके साथ जुड़े छह लोग चौसठ छोटे जंगल और अस्सी हजार पेड़ लगा चुके हैं हमें शायद आंकड़े काफी बड़े लगे लेकिन शुभेंदु के लिए ये सिर्फ एक सोच की शुरुआत है और सफलता का मंत्र इनके पास एक ही है रेडी टू गिव योर होल लाइफ फॉर वन सिंगल कॉज आई थिंक देन द प्रॉब्लम इज रेली गोइंग टू सॉल्व तो अगर शुभेंदु की तरह आप भी लाए हैं अपने स्तर पर समाज में कोई बदलाव तो हमें लिख भेजिए क्लब डी एस सी एट जी मीडिया डॉट एस एल ग्रुप डॉट कॉम पर और हम दिखाएंगे दुनिया को आपकी कहानी तो दीज आर सर्टन स्टोरीज विच पीपल आर डूइंग इन देर एरियाज सो आई थिंक वी ऑल है many times we ask definitely questions what concerns us but we find what is wrong being done by others whether it is media the government anybody else but we sometimes forget that we need to do something ourselves also uh, sir the entire issue that has been circulated on today regarding this uh, um, media credibility i believe there is a one important aspect to that is the willingness of the tv news channel to there's a trade off between the trp or the viewership and the actual news reality so how do you perceive in the coming years this trade off is going to shift but uh, one aspect keeping uh, you should keep in mind while answering this question is that if you go people have opinionated news about regarding each and everything uh, that's being telecasted on the news channel so if they have a uh, if they go with the very truth and not a opinionistic news each and every news channel will will be having a same content so then how will the competition uh, is rising day, day by day in terms of number of news channels how will that uh, that, that, that landscape will actually come up yeah you are right you are very good question i must compliment you on that See, it is a dilemma many times uh, one faces. So sometimes opinion or a stand taken, if it is honest stand, and if you come up and say yes, I do stand for this, then rest is up to the people whether they accept it or not. But if I use that opinion, push that opinion for my personal gain, then probably it is. wrong and it is only my own conscious which will help or not help you generally you have to see whether this news media brand is honest overall or not hello sir my question is related to the advertisement and promotion uh, as z network has various channels and news channels also uh, if we compare that uh, uh, credibility towards the news channel is a bit of is it's very good as compared to the other tv channels so do you have any selection criteria what to promote or what to advertise on news channel as compared to other tv channels because people will see your news channel as, in with very credi credible manner as compared to other other channels so do you have any selection yeah, criteria there, for there are always financial pressures uh, that uh, do not uh, allow us to reject certain advertisement but we should be doing this on particularly on news channel we should not put advertisements which are misleading we should we should do that we have not done that so far i must admit yes. yeah we have already established in this forum that uh, news channels have become a business so a business is essentially built up of his employees and uh, so i just want to know what level of uh, like check do you uh, what level of priority do you give to a person's integrity when you hire people at various levels like uh, i just uh, want to cite an example there are news channels which say that this xyz news channel ne aapko sabse pehle ye khabar di when the news is much more important earthquake ki news hai but people are more focused on saying ki is channel ne aapko pehle news di so are there people who say nahi sir mere ko ye line nahi bolni do you prefer such people or do you you know uh, discourage such people to join your company see there are two ways two aspect to the integrity of the journalist one is that are they taking money and pushing a news or they are taking money and removing a news that we have zero tolerance but still it happens even in our company it happens on the this is a question of ethics and the kind of reporting i keep telling people in my company 
that a girl was raped in some village by some people. Girl is a girl. Why do you say that Adivasi girl was raped or a scheduled caste girl was raped? Why do you sensationalize that by saying that? So, but there are many such things which we need to be sensitive about. This is a question covered under media being insensitive. We have to do the check and balances, including our own network. I've seen particularly in this 2014 election, particular candidates have bought the local media very much. Those incidences do happen and there are there. That's why particular media brands do lose their credibility. Also, certain uh, independent individual reporters do lose their credibility. I don't know whether you have ever thought about it or not. A major reason that people these days are asking media these questions. And please take my comment. I'm not supporting any particular caste, creed, or religion, nor I'm against any caste, creed, and religion. I'm telling you the facts, what people have told us, and it's sensitive. So please, if somebody feel offended, I would seek pardon in advance. There was time, I would say 70s, 80s, that it was fashionable to be saying in the media that how best the socialistic pattern of the governance is. Why big moneyed people are thieves, why the market economy should not be supported, and things like that. It was a fashionable in the media to be known to be socialistic. Whether I practice or not is a different thing. So this was one thing which people are asking questions. Second is fashionable to talk against the majority community than in favor of the minority community. If you majority in favor of the majority or media, you are being termed as non-secular. This has been the scene of media and nobody question that. But the, these days people are asking those questions. What should we, media be doing in these uh, particular issues? In my mind, uh, there is a very thin line between uh, realistic news and opinionistic news. So in this context, there have been a lot of opinions which have been shared mm. in the, in the new, through the news forum. So that has to be uh, taken into check. Because at the end of the day, we have come into such position that we are influencing a lot of people. Even through a lot of different mediums altogether, be it print media, social media, or the realistic news channels. So how do we go about it is going to be a question ahead, because this has been going on for more than 20, 25 years. I think I am more optimistic today than I used to be before. And I think... So much, you ask the question that there is too much information. But many times when there is a too much information, it creates competition amongst the people who are generating the information. And naturally you are perforced to do a better quality information. Like in any consumer products, you have 20 brands to choose from. Every brand will have to improve and improve its quality and communication and everything, pricing, everything. So news is not different. Hello, sir. There's a lot of uh, satire websites that have come up for the news part. Like, uh, they are portraying the real news as if unreal news. And there was an incident where a uh, fake news was taken as an original news and published on a lot of websites. So how do you take uh, these unreal times or the satire website, the faking news, part of uh, the social media. See, what has happened, unfortunately, UPA1 government, the then INB minister who happened to be my friend, today unfortunately he is for the last seven years, eight years lying as a vegetable, Priyaranjan Das Munshi. I told him, I said, sir, please don't distribute the news channel licenses like you are distributing 
a pan bidi shop license to open this will boomerang on all of us and on this country today in india out of 300 news channels at least 150 channels are owned by the vested interest people builders in agra owns a news channel because they want to keep the police away from them already 20 cases against them registered but news channel chala raha hai police wala bhi darta hai and i went to even prime minister manmohan singh i said sir please don't do it you should like you are giving banking license same criteria you should apply when you give a news media license because news media is more dangerous than somebody doing something wrong in a bank because here you change the opinion of the people for wrong thing but unfortunately these days some people are talking about propagating that there should be no security requirement for a news media or a media so i mentioned on my tweet i said in that case give daud ibrahim also a license to run a tv channel uh, yes. sir uh, we have discussed a lot many aspects as to uh, whether uh, whether media has lost its credibility or not but i would like to uh, throw a light on uh, one aspect that uh, i think media has really helped in changing the ideologies of indian parents uh, like uh, earlier uh, i it's a very sensitive topic uh, earlier also rape used to happen but we never used to get exposed to that information that in what village in which village of india such things are happening but now as we saw um, in recent past in delhi when nirbhay uh, case happened all of us we were sitting um, in front of the tv channels and we watched that show with our parents and our parents uh, they, they didn't shy away in discussing such things so i think that is what media has contributed and i, I can proudly say that uh, today indian parents have changed their ideologies just because of media good thank you at least <laughs> at least in last one and a half hour i got one credit <laughs> but let me tell you one thing i don't know whether you you saw it or watched this uh, analysis which we did bbc came out and said delhi rape capital of the world did you hear that and we were the only channel which refuted that with the facts and figures uk has got eight times more rapes than india usa is 20 times more rapes than india and and they they couldn't answer any of our queries so with that i would say that i don't think we have concluded any which way but uh, certainly one thing comes very clearly that we as news media we need lot of doing lot of work is required on our part to be done for you and this august house to say no media is credible and i assure you and my viewers that at least at z we will try our best with that thank you very much for having me thank you अगर आप भी डॉक्टर सुभाष चंद्र शो में भाग लेना चाहते हैं या कोई सवाल पूछना चाहते हैं तो हमें ईमेल करें हमारा ईमेल आईडी है dsc@zmedia.slgroup.com या आप अपने सवाल हमें एसएमएस भी कर सकते हैं बस टाइप कीजिए dsc स्पेस अपना सवाल और भेज दीजिए 57575 पर